What's up guys, it's Josh from Card Fighter Empire here today um, at ARG Charlotte, North Carolina with our third place winner and I'm gonna let him introduce himself. Hey, I'm Andrew Williams. I got third place at ARG in Charlotte playing Great Nature. Awesome, awesome. Uh, why did you play Great Nature? Today? So I uh, really love the deck. Um, I've been playing it since set 13 came out and with the new support from the Zoo Booster, it's just, I think it has a really good end game, it has really, really good cards, and I thought that there was going to be a lot of rush decks, or decks that had really good early game, like Victor or Aquaforce that could rush me, or decks like Chaos. I want to be able to kill myself early against Chaos, so I figured that this specific build would help uh, beat them, and I did play against three Aquaforce and like a ton of Chaos, or some Chaos and some Deleters, so it was definitely worth so what did you think about uh, like taking Great Nature into a tournament where the newest set just came out, the uh, Stargate booster? Like, did, did you fear those decks, or like, were you worried about them at all? Um, I think that inherently I'm just afraid of deleters just because of what they can do. Um, but I think that this deck can uh, beat Gallop because I just thought like it can beat Deep Police because the, I can guard their stuff pretty consistently. Um, Nova Grappler is pretty back and forth. I have a really good kill kill turn, but so do they. So it just depends on how much advantage I can get early. And I have, uh, I tested the Chaos matchup a lot because that was obviously the deck I thought there was going to be the most of. And, but this deck can draw as many cards as needed to like defeat the close Deluge stuff. And I also play a Grey 2 that really helps counter like the whole Deluge stuff. So I felt pretty comfortable like, going into the event. Sweet, sweet. Do you want to talk a little bit about your matchups or like how that went, uh, whether you 2 won yeah, people Yeah, sure. To... So uh, round one, I 2-0'd uh, Thavis, a really nice guy. Round two, I 2-0'd Messiah, a guy that uh, rode with me, Micah. Um, the poor guy didn't have stuff from Stargate. Uh, <laughs> round three, I played against more Aqua Force. He ended up making top eight, another really nice guy. Um, I won that one 2-1. One. <laughs> Round four, I played against uh, Deleters. I won that 2-0. That was the matchup I feared the most going into the event, but I realized that there was a way you could play around their stuff. Round five, I played against Chaos. Won that 2-0. Um, the Owl for Energus is just super good against Chaos. Round six, I played against, uh, and then I played against Deleters, and the one leader guy I played against, and he savaged me. He, uh, I had three great threes in hand, and I G-guard and two 5k shields. And off of his restander given, he checks into uh, Cl the Clipper Deleter Evo to get another attacker, and I was just like, yeah man, you deserve it, y y you got it. And then uh, I played against um, Thavis, Thavis Ripple, which was like, it was a really cool build. It was early game, kind of like mine. But he prepped, he prepped going second. I always prepped going first if I had the option. So like, I, I felt like I kind of had like the natural edge because everyone's like, it's a big belly deck. They want to go sec, they want to go second. But I kind of built the deck to go first. Um, and overall, it was just like, yeah, re really, really fun event for sure. And I would uh, assume that like, since you built your deck to go first, that uh, just gave you a natural advantage in the whole, you know, tournament yeah. in general because people yeah. would choose to go second. Yeah, off nobody, of nobody like. Nobody, even though I told them like I prepped going first, I won like probably like 60 or 75 percent of my die rolls. And I'd always prep going first, but once they see that you're like a stride deck and not like Aqua Force, they're still like, yeah, you can keep going first. Even if even if I like call a ton of attackers when they're at seven, like I don't know. You'd, you'd, I thought that they would like catch on, but nobody ever did. So. Well, awesome. Yeah. It clearly worked out in your favor. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> so uh, we can move down to your deck. Yeah. Profile a little. You can go through your yeah. deck. So for the, uh, for the starter, we play a telescope rabbit. Um, this is pretty much the ideal starter. Its skill is combo stool and rests itself to get 4K to any rear guard. At the end of the turn, it's retired. So this triggers all your early game stuff. It makes you get your makes you hit your power threshold. And it was actually more useful late game than I thought it would be. Um, because. Against some decks, you really, really need to hit certain powers because that's the like the max their G guard can get. Um, so if you're playing early game stuff, I would definitely only play Telescope Rabbit. And then for the grade threes, we play the best thing that happened out of uh, Zoo Booster. Played four amazing professors with Big Belly. 
So this is just a straight upgrade of the old one. It's a on-place, on-stride, once-per-turn uh, call and it gets 4k, so it doesn't cost um, counter blast, so it's free. And then the other skill is at the end of its battle, if it's successful, you can counter blast one to stand into the rear guard and it gets 4k. So it's a Crayon Tiger. And we play the uh, Mike Saburo, so this is like a searchable Crayon Tiger, which is like super, super helpful. But yeah, if you're playing a big belly deck, you gotta play four of those. And then I played two Talton Rhino for the rest of my grade threes. So this thing has, um, it's a really simple card. It's an 11k, um, success 20,000, generation break one, if it swings out of Vanguard and it's successful, he, uh, they can't guard grade zeros for his battle, and he gets 4k. So, and that makes a really stupid combo with the strategy play in the, uh, like, late game, when they're at four or five. It makes, like, a really, really good kill. And then for the grade twos, we play the man, the myth, the legend, Crayon Tiger. Um, I don't think I should have to explain what he does, but it's a uh, when he's boosted and he swings out of Vanguard. Um, stand another card. You at the uh, end of the turn, you draw a card and retire it. Um, he's not as you still play four of them because he's super good in any matchup that isn't Chaos. Um, but in Chaos, you'd normally like to focus more on uh, the uh, the new Big Belly. And then we play three Lesser Rider. Um, this card can. Uh, give your success units resist, which is really, really helpful against Chaos. Um, and it can also make your boosters have resist against, uh, like, Kagero. It's a really useful card, and it's just good to have all around. You want to call one every turn against control decks. Let me play three Field Glass Otter. Um, this was the, like, probably one of my favorite cards. Uh, so it's success 20,000. Generation Break 1, when you call them, you get 4k, but that's not the really good skill. The good skill is, um, at the end of the turn, if he's successful, you can bounce him to your hand. So since all the great nature effects, when they give, um, like, at the end of the turn, draw a card, retire it, you don't have to retire the card to draw. So you can, like, call this off your on-play skill, and then swing for 20, and at the end of the turn, you can bounce it to your hand. So it's, like, a really good cantrip, and it's, uh, and against Chaos, you can, like, call it off Deluge, and it, nobody, like, really likes reading what great nature cards do, because they're, like, paragraphs, or they're, they're like, not, they like think they're irrelevant, but, like, if you, if they don't kill it off Crisis, you can just bounce it to your hand, since it'll see the card be successful. And then we play two Artistic Ocelot. So um, this is our new Crayon Tiger. Uh, not Crayon Tiger, Binoculus Tiger. Um, he gives, if he swings at anything, you get 4K. So it helps trigger your early game stuff without needing to Counter Blast. And then Generation Break 1 Counter Blast 1, you can give 4K to anything and in turn draw or retire it. So it can help you hit power thresholds. Sometimes It's your preferred um, grade 2 ride, but sometimes late game, you just call it to the back and uh, give 4K to like your Rhino or your other attacker. Then we, for the grade 1s, we play for Deli Belly, um, this is the new PG. When it's retired, uh, GP1, when it's retired from rear guard or guardian circle, if you have a big belly, soul blast one, draw up to one, counter charge one. So um, obviously it's really good, it helps re like refresh its cost, but against Chaos, since uh, my G guards can normally like stop Chaos anyway, um, you can call this off like Deluge, and if they kill it at some point, you can just draw off of it. So it's really nifty. Uh, I actually did that against my Chaos game, uh, and it definitely came in handy. And I play four Stride Enabler. You always want to Stride, um, and you always want to get your big belly. You never want to ride the Rhino. Then I play four Mikke Saburo. So we're playing six grade threes, and this is our good early game card. So it, on place during the main phase, you give a rear guard the skill that if it's killed, you um, search for a grade three. So it lets us play like lesser grade threes, but it also facilitates our like early game where you call a, like a Mike Saburo and your like Vanguard and then you can call like a Ruler Chameleon or any other card and just swing and like rush them. Like m I'd say most of my games I if I did open like any semblance of like Mike Saburo or anything I ended my turn my grade two turn with them being at like two or two or three damage because they all prepped me going they all wanted me to go first so I could swing seven nine seven and they had to hit a defensive trigger. And then I played two Body Faction Mouks. Um, so this is the Duckbill replacement. Um, when it boosts, it gets the skill that if it's retired, you can draw a card. And then if it's successful, you can optionally bottom it. So the reason why we played Vix over Duckbill is because the whole problem before is that if you opened Vikasaburo and Duckbill, it was awkward because you had to choose, choose which one to resolve. But if you pump this with like Telescope Rabbit, and you give Mikasabra skill to it, you'll draw a card and search. So it basically lets you do best of both worlds. And then I thought there was a lot of Vic Victor here, but it's actually more helpful. I didn't play Victor, but I did play against Aqua Force. I pl played one light elemental hold only. So there's actually a way to cheat this out during your opponent's turn. Um, but it's um, on place, you have to turn, you have to counter blast one. Um, but if you can't counter blast, then you don't have to really do anything. Um, but on the fifth wave or more, 
any your opponent has to counter boss one to swing at your your vanguard with their rear guards. Um, and some people don't like taking your bear wolves because they want to deny you your unhit draws. So they're at low counter blast, um, so they can't swing at you. Uh, my round three opponent, he had three more attacks after his fifth wave that he couldn't do because of Honoli, and that single handedly won me the game. Um, and then onto the triggers. Uh, Pretty standard, we play four of the big belly crit. Um, it's cool to call this off of your uh, on-play skill because you can move it to soul and then at the end of the turn you'll still draw. Um, but soul is really important in this deck. We play four of the uh, move it into soul, get 3k, bigger Holstein, I mean approval frigate. Um, like I said, you want soul and sometimes it helps you hit power. We play four ruler chameleon. Um, it's a, when it's retired from rear guard circle during the end phase, you can uh, add, kind of also want to add another copy of it to your hand. So while it may seem like thinning a trigger out isn't very good, but if you're if they kind of like put you to two, you can call this for your telescope rabbit target and then Mikay Sabro into it. So you um so you don't go so like you do more than break even. Like you basically you, you plus off your uh really chameleon and then you play four of the new heal because this deck I'll say it again, this deck needs soul and there's nothing else you'd rather run. The uh the uh spangled isn't very relevant. And then for the uh strides we play Three of your first, um, sometimes second, sometimes third, but if, if you don't know what to do, just spam it. Uh, Omniscient Shrag and Barrel Wool. Um, this, is a, this is the new GR. It's Soul Blast 1 once per turn to give your entire front row 4k for a face up card in your G zone, and then they get the skill that on hit they're retired once per on hit you draw, and then at the end of the turn, everything chosen is retired. So um, it's your first stride, it gives you a lot of good pressure with restanders, um, and it scales really well into late game. Um, because you go from your columns being like 21s to after you G guard being like the highest I hit this weekend was 51 um, Which is like multiple G guard territory if they don't have PGs. Then I played uh, two um, Kyle Tominka uh, So this is a I went into this guy once against chaos breaker uh, It skills when he hits success 25,000 you bottom any four cards to give 4k draw retired or something so basically you want to grind chaos breaker out um, so until you can get a really good thin deck and then you uh so that you can outgrind them uh, then we play two mana armor this thing is um this is your like secret kill card so when i mentioned a combo with the uh rhino beforehand uh basically this thing gives it's kind of boss one to an unplug the copy of itself to give two, 4k to two rear guards and they gain the skill that they swing at a vanguard and they're 20k or greater they can't guard with grade ones or higher and with Rhino, if it swings 20k or greater, they can't guard with grade zeros. So it basically makes it so they can't guard with anything from their hand. So they have to G guard. And like you can get your Rhino pretty big. And some decks can't comfortably G guard. And if it restands, it just gets really crazy. Um, we play one Frenrigus. Uh, so this is our Chaos out. Um, he gets 4k for every rear guard. But when he's put from uh, from Vanguard Circle into G zone, kind of must one, Soul one, GB3, kill everything. Um, and you draw a card. Counter charge one, soul charge one for every card you kill. And how uh, end of turn procedure works is that you put your card face up in a G zone, and then you unlock everything. And your t and then cards uh, like putting face up from Vanguard skills and unlocking skills happen at the same time. So you can use your turn player priority and kill everything so that Chaos can't draw anything from it. And then we play uh, one Zoa. Uh, I went into this once. It it's good to have if they count PGs, but mostly. Uh, Balearal is good. Um, and then we play one Seabreeze, because uh, if you manage to resolve Seabreeze with Creon Tigers, it's super, super good. Uh, then G Guards, we play uh, two Sangapa. Um, this is uh, on plays, kind of boss one. You can choose a uh, one Vanguard and one Rear Guard, and they gain 4k for every, uh, imp for every circle without a unit. And then if the Rear Guard hits 20k or greater, you draw. So if you just have your starter and your Vanguard, it, the Rear Guard hits uh, 21. So, uh, but this, because the 4K numbers are so awkward, if they swing 26 and you G Guard, you hit 42. So that's a no pass for one G Guard, which is pretty helpful. Um, but like the draw is super relevant and the power is really relevant. And we play one of Head of the Bastion Ardillo. Um, when he's placed, you can retire any amount of Rear Guards, but then he gets 10K Shield if you have a few more open circles. The reason why we play uh, more of these and less of these is because this counts uh, this can like use locked circles but you can't use like get around locked circles with this and they play one um, Almirage so this is soul boss one on place to like to call two rear guards from your hand so 
one game against Davis, I cheated out a Honoli during my opponent's turn, which was really, really fun. Um, but mostly, I thought Gridora was going to be here. There's a couple of Gridora players here, but you can um, call a column during their turn. And then we play two uh, Spangled. Um, so this is GB1, uh, Counter Blast 1, Unflip a G Guard to give all of your grade 3 less guardians the skill that if they retire from Guardian Circle, you draw a card for every one of them. So if you G Guard once, you break you break even, but if you G Guard twice, you go plus, you basically double your investment. Um, but this is really helpful against decks like Victor or Aqua Force when they can swing for really big numbers and you don't have a G Guard, or even if you need combo pieces. Like if, you, if you're going to drop too many cards in hand, you can Spangle and get some of it back. Uh, yeah, but that was, it was six G-Guards, um, because your strides, I never wish there was another stride in, in my deck, so, yeah. All right, sweet, sweet. Um, so I was glad to see that you had a lot of outs to chaos. Yeah, um, definitely. you definitely thought about your deck well, yeah. uh, before coming into today's tournament, and it was like a tournament with like 80 people, so yeah. making third is nothing yeah. to slouch at. Um, but definitely thank you for doing a, a profile with us. Yep. Um, again, this has been Josh from Cardfight Empire, guys. Uh, you check us out on the next video, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.